Hey guys, it's the Urban Investor here, back with another video. And today I have a really, really great treat for you guys. Not only have I picked my top five picks that are under one dollar, so extremely undervalued at the minute, these coins that I've picked have extremely low supply comparative to most coins at the minute. Now, why is this important? So, first of all, being under a dollar, it's very easy or easier I should say for these coins to go from one dollar to say ten and therefore ten times in their value than it is to say for something like a coin that's going from you know three hundred dollars to a thousand or you know Ethereum going from a thousand to five thousand as an example right it's easier for something that's smaller to gain a relatively higher return from a percentage point of view than it is for a bigger number to grow in the same uh, sort of scale so that's the first thing second thing regarding supply why is limited supply so important well put it simply it makes uh, the coin or project in question very scarce now there are a lot of projects out there that have a max supply of a billion two billion ten billion hundred billion now what does this mean from a practical point of view how does a price determine itself it's purely through supply and demand from a basic economic point of view now for price to go up you need demand to exceed supply however if there are billions of coins in circulation then it's very difficult for demand to exceed supply because there's always going to be coins in circulation uh, to meet demand however if you have something that's very scarce that people want then this is going to be, by logically speaking, pushing the price up a lot quicker. And you can see this with um, you know, projects that have limited supply, even smaller than these uh, coins. Luna is a, a very good example. Luna is basically the Wikipedia of the blockchain. And this, if my memory serves me right, the max supply is just under, I think it's around about 3 million or less. And it's already uh, you know, in 30 or 40 dollars at the start of 2017 it was a fraction of that price so we can see why it's so important with limited supply so hopefully this sort of provides some context in terms of why these coins are a lot more valuable than other coins that are under a dollar at the minute but have a massive supply in terms of in the billions so without further ado let's jump straight into my first pick which is oyster so oyster denoted by prl is actually doing really well today it's up 12% versus USD and 21% versus Bitcoin and from a technical point of view we can see it's looking great we had a massive jump uh, at the start of January and now at the end of the month it looks like we've bottomed out and hit the lows and the upside potential is huge from a technical point of view now from a price action let's look where we are we're at 94 cents look at its peak if we look here we can see four dollars if I can keep going run about four dollars say so we can see my mouse isn't exactly accurate but we can say say see run about four dollars so that's already four times its value potentially um, uh, in terms of where it's been in the past so again you can see why it's a lot easier for this to hit ten dollars say by the end of the year uh, and therefore 10 xing than it is say for bitcoin or ethereum to do it now that it's already had the mad price action so so definitely one that's very undervalued in my opinion now let's jump into what this project is before we go any further and delve into uh, some of these numbers here so let's go on the website so we can see what oyster pearl is uh, about so oyster is essentially trying to target two things one is targeting uh, web advertising or banner ads and as well as cloud-based storage now there's a really good video here it's only 1 minute 13 um, seconds very quick which explains it simply so do check that out because it does explain it we can see it's got some good coverage and then further down it explains it in a bit more detail now again to keep this video short I'm not going to go into a deep dive however I'll just explain the basics and hopefully give you guys um, just the uh, you know early uh, important bits of information and then you can do further research on the back of that so we can see it explains the problem with advertising at the minute so 
um, you know, with ad blockers and um, all of the privacy issues uh, with advertising, people are, are blocking the ads, which therefore means the content uh, publishers are not really uh, generating uh, the desired effect by uh, advertising uh, their product. Now, what's the solution? So what Oyster are doing is giving a very simple code which you put into uh, the website uh, for the host and therefore what they, what happens is it uh, uses that to essentially secure the network using uh, the website visitors, uh, GPUs, graphics cards and CPUs processors, right? And therefore the website um, essentially receives pearls. So rather than getting uh, advertising revenue uh, through placing adver adverts on their website, they're getting revenue via this means. Now, what's the benefit for the uh, end user or the person who visits the website? Well, they don't get spammed with different, uh, you know, uh, ads and stuff like that. And from the hoster point of view, they can uh, have more real estate to publish more content on their website and, the, and at the same time get funds uh, for uh, essentially uh, using this script. So it's a win-win situation. And how does a crowd storage fit into this process? So what uh, Oyster are essentially doing is providing a file upload uh, service using Tangle. And basically this is allowing people to uh, anonymously store um, you know, content and data uh, online uh, in a cheap uh, decentralized manner. Now, for this, for the person to do this, they're going to need to buy Oyster Pearls to do this. So this creates a demand and supply. So the web hoster, by not advertising um, their uh, website or uh, selling space on the website, they're getting uh, advertise or revenue via, in the sense of pearls, by adding this script uh, that we saw up there to basically, um, uh, you know, receive revenue in that respect to replace the advertised revenue, and then. The user gets a better experience and then people that want to use the crowd storage aspect of it are going to need the pearls uh, so therefore the website hosters can sell it so you can see there's a good supply and demand here um, so in a nutshell that's what they're trying to do they're trying to tackle uh, two problems here one uh, the advertising space and therefore giving um, the revenue back to the websites uh, and the hosters uh, so that they don't have to spam people and at the same time it's creating a better cleaner experience and then you've got the storage aspect of it as well by providing a, a decentralized anonymous way to store um, data securely so again uh, that's the project uh, in a nutshell you can see uh, the team here uh, I'm not going to delve into too much um, you can see there's some LinkedIn uh, links there so you can really research the team but largely largely speaking you can see it's a, a decent sized team now let's look at the roadmap as you guys know i like to look at the roadmap to see what's upcoming to see these catalysts so we can see they've got their test net release in january then they've got another release uh, in feb and now this is important they've got their main net released in april which is not far away so what does the main net release mean it essentially means that the platform is going to be live so if the platform is going to be live that means there's going to be people actually using uh, the product and therefore you're going to have adoption so I'm not going to go any further than that so hopefully you guys can see the potential and how many more sort of catalysts you have upcoming for the price to go up and now let's delve a bit further on the website just briefly we can see I'll come to exchanges in a second where you can get the uh, uh, tokens but I'll quickly jump to the medium uh, page because I do like the vlogs uh, because there's so much information on here so you can see today uh, first of Feb the Oyster testnet is live that probably explains why the price has jumped 20% relative to Bitcoin so can you imagine when the mainnet launches in April how much the price is going to go up so I think again this is a very good buy at this moment even though it's gone up 20% already today I think we're at the relative lows and when the mainnet launches you're gonna have huge, huge price action. So definitely do check out Oyster Pearl, guys, and do your own research. Just to summarize, we can see they're currently ranked 201, so nowhere near 
in terms of um, in everyone's faces everyone tends to focus on the top 100 so I think this is a very good coin or token at the minute rather than going under the radar only 61 million market cap decent volume two and a half million so it's not you know a pump and dump and as I said secondly supply of only 65 million at the minute with a max supply of 108 million so that's very very small in the grand scheme of things when you see things like Cardano and Verge in, in you know in the billions so as an example and I do hold both of those um, just to basically um, put into context I'm not trying to you know hit those those projects so that's that uh, so yeah definitely do check it out where can you buy it uh, you can see it's on KuCoin at the minute and some uh, volume in Cryptopia so that's number one now number two on my list is first blood now I've covered this on my channel I think it was just a month ago and you guys are getting a significant discount to where I actually bought it so if you compare to when I bought it uh, I think I bought it a couple of weeks ago so look what's happened because of all the flooding with Tether and um, you know Bitcoin with Bitfinex and all that stuff career the, you know it's taken everything down and therefore it's very cheap at the minute we're at the lower end similar to oyster so we can see the upside potential is huge for this again you can see we're only around about six and a half thousand sats 60 cents and look at this back in uh, july you're at two dollars just earlier in this month you were at over two dollars so again you can see the potential here guys this can easily be 10 15 dollars by the end of the year so what is first blood so if you guys follow my channel you'll know this is an esports platform now what is esports esports is basically competitive gaming now this is uh, huge uh, and growing in uh, asia particularly the china and korea and we can see they've already got uh, one of the main games launched already dota 2 and there's a a, a uh, beta I believe already live you can go in and test the product now um, you know you can see how it uses the blockchain to basically uh, you know make payments for these tournaments and competitive gaming a lot easier uh, getting rid of the middleman uh, so there's a you you know a useful use case uh, in and an application which is very useful and again what I will do is try and look at the roadmap uh, to see what's coming now let's see if we can find anything I'm not sure if we have it here so we can see more games coming soon which is always going to be good so a bit more about the product uh, let's have a look at the about page maybe there's a link here now we can see it's Boston based okay mm it doesn't seem like the links here so maybe what I'll do guys is I will search it myself so I've got the medium page loaded here for first blood and I've got a specific article up here from Joe the CEO um, on the 8th of December so do check it out it reviews 2017 uh, nicely and then goes uh, to 2018 in terms of what um, yeah, they're looking to achieve so if we skip through 17 uh, definitely do check that for yourselves and we move on to 2018 there's one specific piece although there are quite a few good catalysts out there but i just want to focus on if i can find it guys bear with me uh, and that's this section here so we can see here we anticipate to integrate two to four games in 2018 now with just one game we can see they've got market cap of 51 52 million obviously this is pricing in the platform as well however if you look at integrating two to four games of a similar scale you can imagine how much the upside there is for first blood also they're focusing on asia where there's the predominant growth in this industry so again i think that is huge so do check them out i think it's got uh, a huge uh, upside potential this project now just to summarize let's have a look at uh, the financials and before we move on so we can see market cap of around about 52 million uh, volume of 2.5 million which is great and you've got 85 million circulating supply and only 93 million in terms of total supply so you can see circulating supply very close to total supply which is great for uh, price action and causing that scarcity and then 
again look at where we are we're at the lower end we can see we've hit two dollars before uh, a few times two dollars sixty one in fact back in july we can see we're holding most of the volume so, and we're at the lower end comparative to bitcoin and usd in some respects so i think the only way is up really for first blood so where can you get first blood we can see most of the volumes on bitrix but also you've got upbit in there and then you've got a few very smaller exchanges these are the two main ones so number three on my list is Grozel coin now with Grozel coin again uh, outside the top 200 so not much attention um, and what's nice about Grozel coin is two things one is it's holding its volume so you can see just you know less than a year ago the volume was very very minimal look at the volume nothing really comparative to USD and now look at the volume look at the candles you can see you've got look, 8 million 7 million and 3 million at the minute in terms of 24 hours so it's some good traction and then secondly the lows are getting higher which is a good sign of price strength confirmation and an opportunity to almost consolidate and push on for new highs so I think that's a great sign from a technical point of view so what is Grozel coin let's jump into the website and find out so with Grozel coin is essentially what Bitcoin intended to do and that is be digital cash without the fees and uh, you know uh, slowness and all that stuff that we're currently seeing as we know it's facing issues with scalability the fees as a result are quite high whereas with Grozel coin it's trying to um, you know maintain those things so you can see almost zero fees you've got the price of the CX, uh, aspect as well you've got SegWit incorporated you've got lightning um, network ready so he's got improvements on top of bitcoin and it's trying to deliver its intended plan you can see all of this other great uh, news as well and uh, features but i'm not going to go into each of them in too much detail there's not really too much about the team here i think it's mainly a community driven project but what's nice is you've got a release every quarter a major release so you can see the countdown here so i think end of march is going to be the next release so potentially another catalyst for another run in price action so so yeah so i think um, definitely a great project i'm just going to move to the roadmap just to pull out any key features here and we can see there's a lot of useful um almost uh, milestones that have been delivered so a good sign that they're delivering the promises but let's focus on 2018 specifically so we can see we've got uh, lightning network releases and atomic swaps which is great but i think what i want to focus on here is this rebranding vote now why am i focused on rebranding one grozel coin isn't exactly the most nicest name it's not the easiest to pronounce the logo isn't you know the nicest out there it's been around for a couple of years so i think it's due a good um, rebrand to get it out there and also if we look at the past what's happened with rebrands we've seen neo previously called Antshares, most of you probably don't remember Antshares, but since the rebrand, as soon as it hit the rebrand, it skyrocketed in price action. And then more recently we saw with Rayblocks, just a few days ago, it's moved from Rayblocks to Nano, and again the price went up 20-30%. And then you've got VeChain and Lisk rebranding as well. So, and you can see the price action uh, move up and continue to move up until those events uh, come come into effect so we can see rebranding is huge so when this uh, vote happens I'm, I'm i'm sure most people are going to vote for a rebrand and again this is going to be a major catalyst for growth so do do check it out and do further research again i think this is a very undervalued coin ranked 227 47 million to the market cap as we said 3 million volume which is great and a really uh, relatively low circulating supply of only 69 million with a max supply of 105 million so do check that out and do some further research so next on my list is we trust now we trust is uh, if you look at the volume here holding its volume nicely uh, as of late we can see the candles getting bigger uh, it's fairly uh, i guess new comparative to say grozer coin we saw previously it's been around for a couple of months nonetheless and again we've got a bit of a dip uh, which is good uh, for some um, entry points 
now only just at the sort of start of Jan or mid Jan we can see we were at 1.33 in terms of USD only 45 cents at the minute so I think this again shows how much you can double and triple and easily 10x in value uh, with these great bargains that I've picked out here now what is we trust so let's jump into the website. You've got a decentralized platform for financial products. Now there's again a nice video here which explains it nicely, but in a nutshell, it's trying to track tackle credit and insurance. So similar to how we can see SALT with trying to decentralize lending. So historically or traditionally, you've got to go to a bank to uh, obtain credit or loan. You've got to go through uh, you know, credit checks. You've got to go through various forms. It takes long. You know, it's uh, you're always reliant on a third party and trust that third party. These guys are trying to shake the industry, similar to uh, Salt, by cutting the middleman out, trying to keep um, the lenders and borrowers, um, you know, together in a P2P manner and trade together, uh, without using a third party and using smart contracts to get rid of trust um, in in the deal. And also, they're similarly trying to target insurance, and that's how they differentiate slightly to Salt. So that's it in a nutshell. Again, I'm not going to go through the website in too much detail. Do check it out. Um, however, what I will do is focus on the team briefly. We can see we've got George, the CEO. Again, you can see he's been working uh, with Google, which is a great sign. Big project or big company, rather. Patrick the Coup. You've got Ernest and Young. So you can see, generally speaking, they've got great tech and um, you know great experience um, for. Uh, for uh, the team you know big big country companies so it shows a good um, you know management team but this is what does it for me look at the devices Vitalik founder of Ethereum I'm sure you guys know who he is you know he's a busy man so I'm sure he's only got a handful of projects that he's involved in and being an advisor here shows I think the magnitude of this project and then you've got Bo Shen as well who's quite known in in the space and Brian Hoffman as well but Vitalik being there I think that's a massive endorsement so let's jump very briefly to the blog to see if there's anything there we can see they've got some basic updates nothing major some great uh, media I don't think I've actually seen a roadmap so that's the only thing that's a bit of a downer for me personally but again you've got the likes of Vitalik you've got a very functional um, project again if you've got um, you know salt to go by there's a huge potential salt is in the hundreds of millions in terms of market cap this is only 42 million volumes only about half a million at the minute circulating supply very close to the total supply of 100 million so again that's a great sign for price action and yeah so ranked 244 outside of most people's radars so definitely another one that I think is going to skyrocket where can you get we trust so it's on Bittrex mainly, you can see most of the volumes there, and then a small amount on Liqui. So number five, last but not least, is Block Mason Credit Protocol. Now, if there was ever a coin that needed a rebrand, it was this one. It's not the most uh, nicest name, let's say. Nonetheless, we can see it's gained a lot of traction in recent uh, weeks. We can see it's not that um, so old. It's been uh, on coin market cap since October, so a very recent uh, project but nonetheless we can see it's, it's gaining traction it seems to be holding its its gains which is great and currently it's only at 62 cents from a high uh, just a few weeks ago at $1.78 so you can see again huge upside potential this one's actually ranked 302 so not even in the top uh, or near the top uh, 200 as we saw with most of the other coins that I've picked so what is this project let's jump in so we can see here uh, a website a bit vanilla if I'm honest but we can see here it's targeting credit so very similar to we trust in some respects albeit a few sort of tweaks we can see it's targeting uh, credit but also you've got health and social uh, in terms of advising and um, yeah so again using um, the blockchain Ethereum smart contracts to essentially record uh, debits and credits um, and therefore cutting the middleman as we've said uh, in terms of historically being banks so I'm not going to dwell on uh, what they do too much so definitely do check them out I and mean, what's great about this project is you can see they've really got partners you've got Coral Health 
um, you know, with Coral Finance here, they're teaming up with these guys. Um, so I think that's great, shows that they've got adoption. And then you've got um, some media updates here, which is great. And then another announcement, which is I think massive again, shows adoption, a Japanese partner here, Baselayer, which has his assisted with their app, their lender app. So I think again, check out the article. I'm not gonna dwell in it too much. I'm just conscious um, we're at 12 minutes already. And uh, yeah, so we can see um, another project which has not been around for too long, but you've got uh, adoption and other partners, which is always a good sign. And then who you've got at advisors here, you've got another co-founder of Ethereum, Anthony. So Anthony, I didn't really actually know who this chap was, so I want you to double check. I Googled him and I found this article here on Cointelegraph. And again, it sort of confirms that, um, you know, he's on uh, one of the founders of Ethereum and uh, basically he's another baller and having him on the project is a massive plus. So I think, again, great um, sort of endorsement of the project. Again, you've got the team here. It's probably not as large as I would have probably liked. Nonetheless, you've got a pretty, uh, you know, solid team. And then I'm just going to briefly go to the blog just to see if there's anything interesting. So you can see they've launched this app, right? I'm not going to go in too much again. Maybe I'll do a standalone video on BlockMason because I couldn't really find much out there. But basically what this app allows you to do is it allows you to settle using Ethereum in terms of your debts uh, and uh, sort of um, credits. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna delve in it too much, but you can see it's, it's there's a live project or, or uh, app rather, that's uh, basically, you know, allows you to actually interact and use it on a mobile basis. Uh, so yeah, so I think it's massive. Definitely do check it out. There's a lot on there in terms of their testing um, and you know what the app does. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I think it's a great sign because it seems like they're, uh, you know, they're near the the top end. If I'm honest, if they're doing all the testing and all that stuff, and possibly the products, uh, you know, might be live. I'm I'm not really read in it too much. However, as I've said, um, you know, you've got big players into their advisors. A really good use case. You know, again, using Salt as an example. If you look look at that, there's huge potential for this. And already in just the space of a couple of months, it's gained a lot of traction and signed some deals. So definitely do check it out, guys. I'm just going to see if I can see a roadmap because I don't think I found one um, on uh, the website. So let's see if we can find anything down here. No, nothing on here. Let's again double check that blog. Okay, nothing there. Let's look have a look at the vision. We've got white paper, t -t legal stuff. I think we've already been down here. Let's have a protocol. I think this is just going down the website. So yeah, so that's another thing to bear in mind. I couldn't really find a roadmap. So I think it's obviously helpful if we had a roadmap uh, to determine whether there's some key milestones to drive the price. Nonetheless, I think it's a solid project. So we can see just to wrap up, ranked 302, only 228 million into the market cap, the lowest out of all of the projects that we've seen today. However, one of the probably most um, huge potential on that respect being so low. Volume, again, despite being ranked outside the top 300, still a very good volume, 1 million, over 1 million volume, circulating supply of 45 million, and then a total supply of 116 million. So definitely another, I think, undervalued project with huge upside potential. And just finally, we can see this is mainly on Binance, um, small amount on Qcoin, but really Binance is where you need to go to get hold of BCPT. Now that's it for the video, guys. Hopefully this is useful. I think these are really good picks. They're all under a dollar, um, very, very low in terms of market cap, decent volume, so it's not really pump and dumps. And for me, the most important thing, very, very limited supply comparative to um, most projects of a similar manner. And just to bring home that final point, I'm just gonna take one more minute of your time, guys. You can see, look at Ripple, under dollar, 38 billion in current supply. Uh, Cardano, 25 billion, 42 cents. Stellar, 45 cents, 18 billion. 
and the list goes on NEM, 9 billion, 67 cents. So, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is for the price to go up for these projects, it's going to be a lot harder than the ones that I've picked out. Now, there's obviously going to be other factors like fundamentally, are these projects better? Have they had adoption? Uh, which will obviously drive price, but from just from a logical point of view and a supply demand point of view, the you know basic economics having a project that's undervalued, under a dollar, and very limited in supply, the likelihood of price action in terms of probability is a lot higher than these other projects that have circulating supplies of it, billions. So that is it for the video, guys. Hopefully this was useful. As always, keep the comments, likes, and subscriptions coming, and I'll catch you in the next video.